So, hello everybody and uh, welcome to another vlog about Stalo. Uh, today we are going to be looking at um, field control with Stalo, how we can control different field elements uh, from the SAP backend uh, at runtime in the Fiori apps. Uh, so I've got a demo app here uh, to show you and we can see that there we've got a few different fields with uh, some different properties uh, and uh, so for example we can see that the job title field here is a read-only field we can see that uh, the phone number field here is a, an open field we can see some mandatory fields uh, as well uh, on there okay so uh, the first thing we can do to um, control whether fields are, are read-only or mandatory uh, is uh, when we define the data schema or define the fields in the backend SAP system. So we have a configuration screen for that uh, under uh, FLM, uh, which is the backend for Stalo, form types, form types configuration. Let's have a look in there. I'll navigate down through my form category to my list of form types. I'll drop down to the bottom here to choose my form type and I'll take a look at the, the data. So here we can see a catalogue of, uh, of subforms or sections within the app. I'm going to navigate to the fields and this is where we can freely define our field catalogue uh, and not only can we add things like the caption but also these various different uh, types of uh, of attribute uh, that we can we can add to the field. So, for example, let's take a look at uh, the job title uh, field, which we uh, see here. This job name field, I select it. Uh, after we move across here, we can see that that is defined to be read only. Um, if we look at the phone number field here we can see that that is defined to be open. Um, if I look at the, uh, the incident date, the date of occurrence here, I can see that not only is it open, but it's also mandatory as well. So if we think about those three fields, if I go back, uh, take a look at the, uh, at the app, we can see the job title field there is, is read only, the phone number is open, and the date of occurrence is, is mandatory. So we wouldn't, we wouldn't be able to submit this, uh, submit data using this app uh, without filling something into the date. So that's at the very basic level. When we define a field, we can define some attributes alongside the field. Now, of course, in real life, uh, we have multi-step processes. Sometimes fields are open for business. Sometimes they're locked down. Sometimes they're mandatory. Etc. So we want to be able to dynamically change when a field uh, is going to be open or indeed or indeed locked down. We've got another configuration table in the back end system. Let's go and take a look at that. So this is the if you like the global settings for access and uh, mandatory attributes. We have uh, a subform and field control section of the table under optimization down here. I'll open that up. Again, navigate through the form category to find my form type. Now I see a different, um, a different option on here for each different uh, status uh, for this particular form type. So here I'm looking at the initial uh, status before we've submitted anything. I can now navigate through my subforms. So there's the various different sections we've uh, defined on the form. And then from there to the fields. So now I, have, I can see a list of the fields I've defined in this particular uh, section. That we call it parent here, the uh, section of the app. And we can see the global uh, access that we have set in the uh, uh, against that uh, form type configuration and uh, global setting for whether a field is, is mandatory or not. 
this allows me to override the settings for access and mandatory based on the logical status of the, of the document. So at different points of the business process we can change those settings. So, um, so for example, we see this, uh, this phone field. Uh, we'd set it globally to be mandatory, but we've said uh, this particular uh, status, we don't want it to be mandatory, it will be an optional field therefore. So we're overriding that mandatory setting with a, to make it uh, optional. But the other thing we can do in this, uh, in this table is change the presence. So not only the, the access, whether it's read-only or open, and whether the, if it is open, whether it's mandatory or not, but also whether it's there or not. The presence will let me hide a field or show a field. And we can see we've got a field down here, the withdrawal reason, which is currently hidden on the, uh, on the app. So why don't I go ahead and uh, make a couple of changes. So let's remind ourselves what the app looks like right now. So let's make this phone number um, mandatory again and let's let's hide this uh, this city field so go ahead and go back to this table i'll take choose the city field and i'll change its presence to hidden i'll take the phone field and remove this override and save so back in the web ide i'm going to uh, just refresh the screen that's just the control F5 to refresh the screen on the browser. That's going to re-render, repopulate this particular app. It's going to bring back not only the data for the fields on the app, but also the attributes for those fields. So we'll see uh, in a second when, we when it comes up here that, that the, the field I chose to hide has gone entirely. The phone number now has this little asterisk by it that tells me that uh, we've now got a mandatory uh, setting on that uh, particular field. So this is, uh, that's how easy it is to change the field attribute in the back end based on a simple document status. So at different parts of the process, fields can come and go uh, or be uh, mandatory or uh, etc. So I'll go back and uh, just reverse that change. Sometimes just the status, the status is not enough um, in order to, uh, to allow us to make the change. Some other business logic, some different business rules might require us uh, to, uh, to make the changes to these field attributes. So in the same way that this table overrides the global the uh, settings, we also have a user exit that overrides the settings from that uh, particular configuration table. So we find the user exit in the business logic section of the IMG under form user exits. Let me open up the user exit for this particular document type. It's a pre-render exit called subform field control. And so I've got nothing in here right now. We, we, we send back a, a table of fields or indeed subforms and, and their attributes. So here we, we're passing in uh, all the form data, things like the document status, the, uh, the index. Uh, so all the information we have about the process at this particular stage, uh, we can put our business logic in here and then effectively just update this, uh, this table, that's the return parameter in order to override the, the settings from that configuration table. It's dead easy, but uh, uh, that's uh, how we can uh, add any other kind of business logic. This allows us to shift our, uh, our development from lots of JavaScript uh, that can get quite complex uh, on the app to modularized uh, logic within the SAP IMG and uh, app app user exits. So it makes it a lot easier to maintain. Um, one thing that's really useful with uh, with Stalo 
is the ability for us to see those different field attributes. So I'm going to go back here to the, the web IDE uh, definition of that view. Uh, and under uh, the, uh, the header here, I've got a bar that uh, allows me to see a whole bunch of things. So I've got hidden right now. I'm going to make that uh, true and make it visible. Save that. And then again, I'll go back to my my runtime view of this uh, app and uh, run it again. Okay, so we see that the city and station field is back. The phone number is now optional again. And we've got this extra bar here at the top. This is a standard bar that uh, all the Stalo apps um, uh, are automatically generated with. So under here, I've got my XML view icon. I, if I open that up, I can see all the information that's passed through the gateway service with Stalo. So uh, when we're, we're building this, uh, this app at runtime, we're not just passing through data for those various different fields, but we're also passing through the various different field elements. So if we take something like the... Um, the phone number field, so we can see that uh, I've got this this row in my uh, my data schema that is being passed through. I'm passing through the label. I'm passing through whether it's visible, whether it's uh, uh, enabled, so it's active or not, uh, so whether it's read only or open, and whether it's mandatory or not. So uh, so for every single field in the app, at every single time the app is uh, is shown, is rendered. Not only am I passing through data, but also these other different attributes. This makes it really, really easy as a, as a developer to see what's going on, to make tweaks in the back end uh, based on some business logic, and immediately see the results in the in the app. So that's the XML view. It really helps us see, figure out what's going on. Also, it shows me. Um, if what I'm seeing there isn't being reflected on the screen, it means that I've got some JavaScript somewhere that's, uh, that's overriding it once again. Uh, so that, that helps me see where my changes are, whether I've made them in the back end, um, through the user exits, or, or indeed if I've got some, uh, some app logic. Uh, so I've talked really about uh, fields uh, in particular, but actually the, the logic appear, uh, also applies to, to subforms or sections of the app as well. Let me just show that briefly. At the moment, we see we've got two sections on here, a detail section and an action plan section. In this particular uh, type of app where they're being shown as icon tabs. Let me go back to SAP again, uh, back to that subform and field control table. This time I won't look at the fields, I'll look at the subforms. So again I navigate through the form category to the form type and the status. I'll choose my form type and status, put the same form type and the initial status here. Then I'll choose my subforms. And you can see I've got a bunch of, uh, of subforms that are hidden and shown. I'll choose this, uh, this CM statement uh, and make it Instead of make it hidden, make it visible again. So I'll just remove the, the, the hidden. Save that. And so now if I go and refresh the view of this app, we should see that extra section appear. And so now we've re-rendered the app, we see not only the details and action plan, but also this extra uh, subform or section of this app, the CM statement section, uh, has, has appeared. Everything's working, there's different, uh, different navigation, etc. If I look in the data schema uh, and I look at that uh, crew member statement, we can see on this subform level the, uh, of the... Uh, the data schema I've also got a, a visible element and so now it's that's true previously it was false and so wasn't shown so in the same way that we can uh, impact the individual field uh, elements attributes 
you can take groups of fields or sections of fields and uh, show and hide them together again through pure configuration uh, without any coding uh, at various points of the, uh, of the business process. So there's a number of ways we can uh, uh, impact uh, field control using back-end configuration uh, and uh, user exit logic using Stalo. Thanks very much.